Welcome back to Fortnite Tales. Team Lindell here. We are playing Fortnite, telling stories. In this op case, we're going to continue our discussion on the development of the early American colonies. Of course, the success of the colonies would not have been possible without the sheer size and space of America. America had a freedom in its vast lands. Uh, something Europeans didn't have. In Europe, the countries were small. Space was limited, which made dissent a danger, conformity a virtue. I mean, heck, it was one of the main reasons why the English settlers came to America in the first place. Okay. What do we got here? Some random person running at me, and we are off to see the world. Where are we going to go? Um, we're probably going to go the same place we always go. These four little houses up here. I don't know why we asked the question, but we are asking. A man could stand on Cape Cod and see the seemingly endless ocean which separated himself from England. He could then turn around and see the size of this largely undiscovered, unexplored, sparsely populated America. You know, if the colonists didn't like the system of government they found on the coastline, they could move into a new area. The only thing that stopped England was their own fear. Because of this, the New World was an experimental place, one which liberty would find a home. Okay, what do we got coming in here? Uh, that is ammo and not a weapon. Uh, there's a weapon over here. Let's grab that before someone lands. DMR, not the best. There's a shotgun over here. Let's grab the shotgun. Let's get some meds. And uh, come in here. Let's go ahead and see what chest is up here. There's no chest but there is ammo Let's grab that okay like so there's like no way to get that chest what oh my God. Like, how do you how's there a chest with no access from inside the house <laughs> i will take that blue weapon the spray come out here and grab this chest uh go ahead and grab this pot let's get up some more uh shields Somebody here. Oof. Oof. Come on. Dead! Let's go! Uh, they just had an SMG. That was probably a real person, the way they jumped around. So I'll take that. Let's go ahead and reorg here. Uh, I'm going to move that over here. Keep the DMR in the first slot. Okay. Let's go over this house. This house used to be one another one that had the oathbound chest. This was a place that had two oathbound chests, which is pretty crazy. But there are chests in here, I'm pretty sure. At least hopefully we'll find some in here. Got another shotgun. That's a better shotgun than the Great Maven. What's in here? Another one of these chests that's in a spot which you can't reach from inside the house, which is interesting. But we will take these splashes and we will get to full health. Swap out shotguns. Green is better than gray. Come up here. What's in this chest? Ooh, the purple havoc. Let's go. I got a real shotgun. It's a good way to start the game. Let's go ahead and grab a little more ammo. Let's go see what's in the outside of our world here. Let's go ahead and we got a key. What? Okay. Oh my god, I'm in dead. I'm in deep trouble. Let's go ahead. Jesus tree. Boom. Come on. Yes, let's go! Um, I don't think that was a real person. Uh, that was... They completely missed every shot after the after they completely lasered me to start with. Get our shields back up to 150. Okay, let's see what we got in this box right here. I've already got one of those, but we would... Yeah, give me the red eye. It's probably the best gun in the game right now for distance, so we'll pick that up. Go ahead and uh, get us some lovely slurp juice. Get our health up a little more. There's some more in here. Okay. So this world of liberty was the point made by another great American that we're going to talk about, Roger Williams. Williams was a Londoner of Welsh descent. He was an ordained minister he, uh, from 1628. He came to the Bay Colony three years later. 
with the intention to be a missionary. He was wanting to convert the Indians to Christianity. Instead, he became a pastor in Salem. You know, he was a clever, energetic man. Uh, he made himself into a well-known figure in local society because of that. In previous episodes, we saw that Winthrop, he stood for the authority of the state. Roger Williams, on the other hand, was the complete opposite. He represented liberty in these early colonies. Ironically, these two men actually knew each other and liked and respected one another, regardless of their political differences. Williams himself loved the vastness of the New World. He took the opportunity to explore the land surrounding the bay. Um, he liked the Indians, established friendships with them. Let's head over this way. What do we got here? Let's go ahead and check out our augments. Nope. Slap Surplus. Yes, we will take some Slap Surplus. That with minis is a pretty good combination for heals. Chest right here. And some splashes. No. Let's go ahead and get this. I think we're going to use the uh, uh, Chug Slurp things instead. As I was saying, he liked the Indians. He established friendships with them. He even tried to learn their language. Uh, it turns out that was impossible. In the earliest 17th century, the 900,000 or so Indians in the United States, Canada area, were divided into eight distinctive li linguistic groups. Uh, they had between two to 300 individual languages, which is a crazy number of languages to learn. Uh, the most common of these languages was Algonquin, which was spoken by about a fifth of the Indians, about 20%. Uh, so he learned Algonquin. He also made notes of the other Indian languages. And in 1643, he published his findings in uh, A Key into Languages of America. It was the first written book on the subject. Let's see what's in town over here. There's somebody here. Where are they? Oh, there they are. Four. Uh oh. I'm dead. Okay. Oh, I'm in good shape. Come on. Let's push him. Ooh, yes, let's go! Okay. All right, minis. Okay, okay. We have survived that. Okay, anybody else here? I don't see anybody else here. Okay, his friendship with the individual Indians led him to conclude there was something fundamentally wrong with the settler-Indian relationship. The Europeans were keen to sell firearms and horses. The Indians were eager to buy them. Williams, he was more interested in converting... He thought the colonists should be there to convert the Indians to Christianity. Instead, he felt the colonists were more intent on selling goods than bringing Christianity to the Indians. It seemed all the colonists wanted to do was dispossess the Indians of the lands and traditions, traditional hunting preserves, even to the point of robbery. Why can't you get up here? This is so weird, man. I, I guess you can in build, but you can't in no builds. It's so weird. Augments. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and reload. Williams found this profoundly unchristian and argued that all rights to Indian land should be honestly negotiated. Fair prices agreed upon for any land purchases. Why did I not get a slurp thing there? Okay, there's one up here. Did it get stuck over here? These are things I want to... Oh, there it is. Weird. I wonder why I didn't see that the first time. Of course, none of this made him popular with the right-thinking people of Boston. And his opinions didn't stop there. As we have seen in our discussion of Winthrop, the religious view of the Anglicans of the time, and even the Pilgrim Fathers before them, was that God covenanted with a congregation or an entire society. Williams, he didn't believe that. He held that God coveted not with groups, but with each individual. 
and the logic that flows from this belief was that society, for society to exist, there had to be an absolute separation of church from state. The only way to be able to protect these individual covenants was for the state to be out of the church business itself. Llamas. Okay, so this is like no build, so llamas really aren't super useful. I don't want to shoot at them because I don't want to bring anybody here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to scare them. And by scaring them, they're going to drop things I could use. Mainly ammo. Look at that ammo. Oh yeah, that's a lot of ammo. Sweet. Let's pick up ourselves some ammo. Okay, we're pretty much nearing full ammo. Basically, what Williams was saying was that every man had a right to, to his individual conscience, guided by the inner light of his faith. Let's go ahead and uh, pick that up. There's people fighting over here. What is going on? Let's see if we can get in on this fight over here. There they are. Let's see if we can get a shot on him. Oh, what if he was shooting at the llamas? Oh! He never saw me. That's crazy. So what Williams was saying was that every man had a right to his individual conscience, guided by his faith. But that is as far as religion should extend. In secular matters, one must submit to the will of the majority, determined through government, without any religious content. Let's go ahead and grab the sword. That is the one piece we're missing. Yes, sir. -y. Go ahead and grab the slap juice. Let's see. Anybody over here? Oh, that's somebody with a sniper. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not about to peek out of that. I guess he's looking to see if there's anybody over here. Okay. That makes me nervous. Oh, there's fighting. Let's go get involved. Over here. And grab. Let's go on over here. Let's go. Ooh, sniper. Oh! Oh my god, I'm dead. How'd he miss me? Holy cow. Let's hide behind this tree. There's somebody else here. There's two of them. You stole my kill. Oh, wow. He's almost dead. I gotta go. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Before he can heal. Where are you? There he is. Missed. 38. Oh, he's low. Hey, get up here. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Yeah, let's go! Okay, let's heal up. Holy cow. Holy cow. Okay, we'll use these splashes to heal up. Slurp juice, we have slurp juices. Go ahead and reload my weapons. Okay. Go ahead and grab these slurp juices here. To the Massachusetts elders, the people running the colony, Williams was not merely just an antonomian, he was a secularist. 
the fact that he wanted to banish God from the government made him a borderline atheist. When Williams began to espouse these views in his sermons, the authorities unsurprisingly grew alarmed. The last thing they wanted was for this type of thinking to take hold in the colony. So in October of 1635, they decided to arrest him and deport him back to England. Ironically, Winthrop, who was out of office at this time, if he wasn't, he probably would have led the charge to stamp out this viewpoint. But Winthrop was nursing his wrongs, so he concluded that the treatment of Williams was unjust and ungodly. He thought that in a tiny England, there was no alternative but to suppress him. But in these vast lands of America, Rogers could, given the choice, he could go somewhere else. <laughs> Okay, let's let's head down this way. Try to get that high ground. Winthrop, who knew that he would have been decided by the council, uh, secretly warned Williams of the plan to send him back to England. Winthrop advised Williams to go ahead and leave Salem. Go ahead, yeah, just go ahead and take yourself out to the Narragansett Wilderness. That way, we don't have to hear your opinions. <laughs> Is that a blue chest? Let's go. What kind of weapon are you going to give me? Ooh, a gold maven. Oh, I'm going to stick with the purple pump. I think that's a better shotgun for this situation, especially since I have a gold SMG. If I didn't have a gold SMG, I may have taken that maven, but I have a gold SMG. So that's my backup weapon in case I need to get into a quick firefight. So yeah, so Winthrop's goal for this was just to out of sight, out of mind. If you're not here, you can't preach it. We're going to be happy. No reason to penalize you or do anything like that. We're just going to send you out. We're just going to basically banish you from our society. That way we can continue to have our society. You can go do your thing somewhere else. <laughs> oh, what's over here? I always love the snow because you can't really hide in this environment at all. I mean, you got the trees. You got some, you know, th this map is fantastic for, like, you know, hiding behind rocks and stuff like that. Whee! Down the hill we go. Across the river. To grandmother's house we go. <laughs> There's so much open space here. Holy cow. Oh, there's somebody right there. Do they see me? Right down here? Gotta be careful here. Oh, no, they didn't see me. Okay, I think that was a bot, but I will take it. Okay, is anybody else gonna come over here? So this is where you gotta be careful. We're in the end game. There's only six other people left. Shots attract other players like floss moths to the flame. <laughs> Fortunately, that wasn't a protracted gun battle. But I don't really see anybody up here behind me. Well, Williams, his wife, children, their household servants, they uh, were like, okay, that's probably better than being sent to England. So they fled into the forest. Unfortunately, it was October. This is the beginning of the harsh New England winter. So they end up spending the winter traveling through the forest, living in the makeshift shelters until the spring of 36. At which point they had reached an Indian village at the head of the Narragansett Bay. You know, and up until his time day, and he, he lived to be 80, lived to be fairly old for this time. Williams believed that the only reason they survived the brutal winter was due to the divine providence, which means it confirmed in his own mind, the rightness of his viewpoints. Which, I mean, that's reasonable. You survived. You're probably right. Because if you thought God helped you get through there, then he probably believes in you. So I, I get that. Well, he ended up negotiating a land purchase with the two Indian tribes and set up a new colony on a site he obviously named Providence. Uh, he had bitter memories of his prosecution, so he let it be known that this new settlement on Rhode Island welcomed dissidents of all kinds. Anybody who needed to flee from the religious tyranny of the, tyranny of the Bay Colony could come to his land. It was a refuge for the antinomians in the New World. 
Okay, what do we got over here? There's four people left. We're kind of stuck here. I hope no one's up in that high spot. In game. Let's try to win this thing. I feel like we need to win this game. Don't know why. I feel like we need to win this game. Let's go. Man, there's going to be somebody up there. I'm going to be absolutely drooled by somebody up top there. I don't see anybody down here, so no one's sneaking up from down here. I am so worried I'm going to get just absolutely sniped up there. Okay, I don't hear anything, so... I figure if someone's going to snipe me, they would have sniped me now. Especially with snipers being one-shots now in the game. Headshots totally take you out. We're going to have to come down to this side over here. Okay. We've got about seven more seconds. The circle will begin to close, and then we'll begin to move. And then once the circle kind of closes that space in, I'm going to be less worried about someone coming in from that direction. So we'll just kind of work our way down here and take this back side of the circle over here. We're going to take the low space, but I've got a sword, so I can kind of move around if I need to. Okay, there's some fighting over to the left. Someone's gone. Oh, two people are gone. Wow. Okay. Oh, that's a little dying storm. So we're going to sit here and kind of... Uh, hide behind these rocks and kind of wait. Hopefully the last two players will get into a fight and we can third party. When there's three people left, the best thing you can do is third party the last fight. <laughs> if you end up in the fight, it becomes really hard. Unless you can get a, a clear win and, and not really take much damage. It becomes very hard because whoever you weren't fighting in this final battle is going to be coming after you, uh, probably on full health. Which is not the situation you want to be in. And if there's like four people left, in theory, you could fight someone, especially if, you know the other people on the other side, and they might run into each other, and, and you'd have some time to heal. But when it's just three, nope, and the circle starts getting this small, it's all about that fight. Okay. Where are we looking at here? Hmm. Well, at least we're protected. Hopefully no one's going to come rolling around one of these rocks. The good news is, is I'll hear them coming at this point. Hmm. Okay, circle speed is close in again. We're going to have to move yet again. Which way should we go? Hmm. Uh, let's slowly work our way up here. Let's go ahead and make it over to these rocks over here. We're actually, we're kind of on the high ground. Interesting. Anybody over there to the right? Oh, that's somebody there. Let's hide back here. Oh, he's got a sniper. He's waiting to snipe me. <coughs> I see you there with your sniper. I'm not going to come out and let you snipe me. I know you want to snipe me. I'm not going to allow it. What if I get shot off when he like looks away? No, he's, he's got a sniper on me. He's waiting to tag me. <laughs> oh, look at that. No, let's go back here and hide. I really don't want to be sniped by you. Okay, so apparently he can't see me, fortunately. I kind of got the right Reich peak here, so I'm in the advantageous spot. I wonder where the other kid is. Okay, so I need to know where the last one is before we make up our mind. Oh, he's right on the edge of the storm. Interesting. Okay. Okay, he's got to move now. Can we get a shot off on him? No, he's still trying to snipe me. We got our sword. I say we go up top. We can always try to move again if we have to. Oh, there's him. He's nobody else up here. Let's go hide behind this rock. Okay, let's get ready to fight. Anybody down below me? I can't tell. Probably someone down there. So there are guys over there. Oh, they're fighting. Let's get involved. Third party. Third party. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go! Oh, yeah! GG! Excellent game. Wow. I got the victory. Let's go. <laughs> well, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. 
And as always, have a great day if you want to.